Hi fellow travelers, Graham here. Today we're at the former location of the Riverview Mental Health Facility in Coquitlam, British Columbia. Dating back to the early 1900s, the Riverview Hospital, once known as Essendale, constructed as an asylum to house those deemed by the province as mentally ill. These abandoned remains, located in Coquitlam, British Columbia, serve as a reminder of those incarcerated here, removed from society and hidden from the public eye. In 1876, the Royal Hospital in Victoria became British Columbia's first facility to house mentally ill patients. But just two years later, patients were moved to a dedicated facility, the Provincial Asylum for the Insane. Facing problems of overcrowding, the provincial government purchased a thousand acres of land in 1904 and began construction of the Riverview Hospital. The West Lawn Pavilion was opened in 1913 and became home to British Columbia's most psychotically disturbed male patients. The building was originally constructed to hold 480 men, but by the end of the year, it housed over 900 patients. In 1924, the acute psychopathic unit called Center Lawn opened and was used for the purpose of testing new treatment methods and assigning treatment plans to new admissions. This was an imposing four-story structure consisting of reinforced concrete with a red brick exterior and an entrance consisting of a two-story portico with large columns and a balcony. In 1930, a 675-bed female chronic unit known as East Lawn opened. This is the largest building on site and the structure is made of reinforced concrete finished with red brick exterior and adorned with a slate roof and a series of dormers. 500 female patients were moved here from the Hospital for the Insane in New Westminster. Because of constant growth, severe overcrowding continued, and although the East Lawn's initial capacity was 921 beds, it eventually housed over 1,400 patients, filling every available space, including the basement and the attic. The crease unit is Riverview's most iconic structure and was constructed in phases. The West Wing opened in 1934 and served war veterans who experienced mental health issues. And in 1949, the building doubled in size with the addition of the East Wing, which housed people showing early signs of mental illness and those who were seeking voluntary treatment. Pennington Hall opened in 1951 and was used to encourage patients to engage in recreational activities. An unfortunate side effect of overcrowding was that tuberculosis spread quickly throughout the patient population during the first half of the century. A separate North Lawn building was opened in 1955 to specifically serve patients living with tuberculosis and it had a capacity of around 230 beds. When this building opened, it marked the peak of Riverview's population with over 4,300 total patients. Due to the facility's remote location, cottages were built in the 1920s to accommodate staff who worked on site. Some of those in residence included the superintendent, the asylum's chauffeurs, and other healthcare providers. Like many facilities in its time, Riverview was known to conduct practices which would seem archaic by today's standards. A Royal Commission on Mental Hygiene was passed in 1925, which increased the prevalence of forced sterilizations, a practice which is now known to be lacking in scientific backing and is seen as cruel and a violation of basic human rights. Electroshock therapy was introduced in 1942 to treat patients with severe depression and continued as recent as the year 2000 when the government and hospital finally came under fire for this practice. Other therapies included psychosurgery, such as lobotomies, for the treatment of schizophrenia, mania, and other psychotic disorders. In 1965, British Columbia adopted a new Mental Health Act, 
driven by greater social awareness and a concern for client treatment and rights. Supported by the introduction of new antipsychotic medications, the province moved towards regional treatment centres and Riverview began to experience a steady decline in beds and facilities. In 1983, some of the buildings began to close, starting with the original West Lawn building, and by 2004, only 800 beds remained on site. In April 2009, Riverview was officially recognized on the Canadian Register of Historic Places, and the hospital's remaining 200 patients were transferred in 2010, leading to the official closure of Riverview in 2012. Following its closure, the provincial government worked with BC Housing and the Coquitlam First Nation to establish the Samiquila project, which would define the future purpose of this site. But while these abandoned facilities await their eventual fate, they've also found new life as one of Canada's most highly scouted filming locations. With their imposing structures and eerie and decrepit interiors, the hospital's West Lawn, East Lawn and Crease buildings have become the backdrop for countless TV and film productions like Saw, Final Destination 2, Fringe, The X-Files, Supernatural and even Elf and Happy Gilmore. More recently, a significant portion of Deadpool 2 were filmed at the Centre Lawn building. Over the years, the footprint of Riverview has been reduced to only 240 acres, with the other sections of land being repurposed as a housing development and regional parks. But left behind are the decaying remains of what was once one of the largest mental health facilities in Canada.